Now we're going to use R as a simulation platform, and we're going to try to answer this question. How does the sample size affect the sampling distribution of means? We're going to use the IRIS dataset. And in the IRIS dataset, there is a column petal length. That's the population that we're going to be interested in. So we can think of our population as consisting of these 150 values of petal length. So what we want to do is simulate the sampling process, which means that we want to iteratively draw samples from this population, calculate a sample mean, then store that sample mean. So let's begin by deciding how many iterations we want. Maybe we'll start with 10,000 and see how that goes. And at every iteration, we're going to be drawing a sample from the population, and that sample has some sample size. So maybe we're drawing five flowers at a time. I'm going to initialize a vector of NAs that we can use to store our sample means. I'll just call it means. And because this is an iterative process, I'm going to use a for loop. So I'll say for i and one through iter. And then what I want to do is take my sample so I'll store that temporarily in D, and I'll just say sample from iris petal length, and my sample size is N. And then once I've got my sample, I want to calculate the mean and store it. So I'll store that in the ith slot in this object means, and it'll just be mean D. Let's take a look at our sampling distribution. Okay, there we go. And I want to draw a vertical line at the true population mean, which we actually know in this case, because we know the entire population. So I'll copy that, and I'll just say AB line. I'm going to make a vertical line at the location of this mean. And I want it to be dashed. I want it to be a little thicker, and I want it to be blue. Okay, our original question is how does sample size affect the sampling distribution of means? So here's our sampling distribution and our sample size in this case was five. Let's see what happens when we vary this sample size. I'll change it from five to 20. And because I've reused N throughout, I could have just written five here, but instead I used N. So now I just have to change this one value and the rest of my code will work just fine. So let's see what happens when we increase sample size to 20. Well, notice the x-axis scale here is quite a bit different. So we're going from about 2.5 to 5, whereas when we had sample size of 5, we were going from about 1 to 6. OK, what happens if we increase the sample size even more, say, to 90? Well, then we've got even tighter bounds, right? So we're going from about 3.4 to 4.2 with sample sizes of 90. So we've answered our original question, and we've done it through simulation. Of course, there are equations that describe the relationship between sample size and the variance in the sampling distribution, but being able to actually simulate that process can give you a unique insight into it, which is kind of nice.